Sir Randolph has sent me instructions to cut all wages in half. By half? I'll have to try and reason with him. Keep out of sight. Get back to work. All of you. There's somebody from the big house up there. Don't believe what Coach Church tells you. He's a troublemaker, he is. Two youngsters up there. Why do they want Shh. us? Over and the place closes down. You can't do that. There's one of us just waiting for the word to stop engine. Bloodworth. No names. Just you let us have them. And then we'll have bargaining power to get our wages back. You can't use two children? How many do you use, slaving here? Well, do we have to fight you too? You'll regret this. Right, lads. What we go? Oh, oh no! Come on, quick! Yeah. Oh. Here you are, lads. A young Murgatroyd and a young Bell walk right into our hands. We haven't done you any harm. Harm? Look at them, lads. You can see they've ne'er done a day's toil, either of them. You work every day at our lessons. I mean getting your hands mucky, like the kids slaving here, fluff snatching, combing, getting maimed or killed by newfangled machinery, sweating our guts out, making carpets, so rich man Sir Randolph Grimsby and the likes of you can lord it over us. He as hasn't got any money. No money? With us labouring night and day here? Well, at any rate, he can't have anything to do with her. She just arrived from France. She's a Murgatroyd, isn't she? Well, it is not bad to be a Murgatroyd. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't laugh at her. That's how they speak English. She has no father, no mother, no money. That is why she has come to live with us at the court. Another leech sucking our blood. And eh, there's lads? nothing wrong with being a Belle, either. Father was a good manager here. Ah, one day it'll be you that's cracking the whip to slavers. That's why you're here, isn't it? Sir Randolph has sent me to the mill so I can learn how to run it properly when I'm old enough. Properly? On half wages? We want our full wages come Saturday, don't we, lads? Well, it's nothing to do with me. I've just come here to learn. Come on, Amory. Go on, oh, you Amory, don't. Go! Get off! Like that, is it? All right, I'll show you what's what, young Master Bell. Come on, lads, we'll show them what's what. Take them down to the blue room. We'll show Sir Randolph his business. No! Let him try to keep us Stop! Stop! I'll have the law Give me a here, lad. I'll have the menace on you. Sir Randolph, all right, on your face. You'll read two black eyes, all right. I don't want to fight you. Well, that's just your hard luck, because you ain't got no choice. <laughs> yep. Oh, I'd learning in fisticuffs, too, eh? One of the grooms taught me wrestling. Oh, one of the grooms, <laughs> eh? <laughs> yep. Bit quick, aren't we? Well, we'll soon stop that. No, 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 no. Get off no. me! Get him off me! Go them off! Right. We'll send him a different message. You've already had a good look at the glue pot. 
Now you're going to have a closer one. Right, Sid. The ropes. Oh, no! Sorry about your little girl. Well, yes, it is terrible. You don't know what it's all about. Go on with you. Hey, Bloodwood's behind all this, isn't he? How that cripple runs you lot, I don't know. He never takes the blame himself notice, does he? He makes trouble, but he stays out of it when it comes. You've got to find Mr. Oldcapple. Well, have you asked someone, I suppose? Oh, Mr. Gunch. No time now, Doctor. Oh. I'll have to let him out, Lockie. It's more than my job's worth. Get away from that door, will you? Or you'll, you'll get the sack. You all right, Mr. Smallside? Yes! Let me out! You'll be sorry for this. Oh, it's not Don't talk fault. to me. It's not my fault. It's, it's too late, Doctor. It's too late to hear what really happened. Come on. Come on. Third on the left. Well, there it is. Come on. I have to inform you just once more, sir. For the fourth time, by my reckoning, that I'm not concerned in the slightest with Sir Randolph's incapability to pay his taxes. Only that he owes that final figure, which I personally calculated, and which you at this very interview have agreed as being accurate to the nearest penny piece. But the point is, Mr. Godstorp. Gobthorpe. Estrus Gobthorpe. Your obedient and civil servant, sir. Mr. Gobthorpe, I beg your pardon. Sir Randolph is at the present time in a financial situation where he is simply not able to pay. No concern of ours, Mr. O'Capple. And if Sir Randolph refuses to come here, then I will come up to Midnight Court and explain in my official capacity. Come in. Uh, Mr. O'Capple, it seems that there is a Master Bell and a Miss Anne Marie Murgatroyd here to see you. Here? Show them in, Witheridge, if you please. Right. What point was I? Ah, yes. I will then officially demand of him, face to face, the total amount due. And if payment is not forthcoming immediately, yes, sir, immediately, then I will serve an order of distraint upon his property. To wit, midnight court. I told you to wait for me at the mill. They wouldn't let us, sir. We had to ask our own way here. Wouldn't let you. Well, you see, sir, the mill is in. What on earth is going on? It's the militia. Something's amiss. If there's going to be trouble, I'd best lock up my office without delay. 
Is there no way of giving Sir Randolph a little more time to pay? As an official of the Crown, it is my solemn duty to warn him that either he pays up now, or we seize Midnight Court, and of all it is possessed in lieu of such payment. Good day to you, sir. Mr. Godthorpe means what he says. I'll tell him what you say. Come along. Wishes to see you at once. Thank you, Tarza. Industry is a is a good thing because it is better to work in a carpet fa factory factory than than to get wet outside in the rain. No. Miss Rocapple didn't like it either. Well, he's right. It is better to get wet outside in the rain than, than to work in that terrible place. Well, isn't industry a good thing? I don't know. But I know one thing. This house and the mill were obtained or by deceit or a trick. We don't know that. Not for certain. Well, then we will prove it. Good night, Lucas. Wait, gentlemen. I haven't got all day. Pack of incompetent, dithering bloodsuckers. Well, I'll deal with them. I'll make them wish they'd never set foot in this house. Now come in, bless you. Mr. Throgmorton and Mr. Gobthorpe, sir. I know who they are, you fool. And I, I have a message for Get you. Get out your pilot. I'll receive no message in this company. No, sir. Tazza! Sir. Tell Mr. Rocapple I want to see him at once. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Good day, Sir Randolph. You're not Ezra Throgmorton? Uh, no, sir. I'm his brother, uh, his partner, Jonathan. Now, where is Ezra? I expect the senior partner to deal with my legal affairs, not his pipsqueak brother. My brother has taken to his bed with a fever, sir. But we have discussed the problem. And you send this vulture packing! Uh, Sir Randolph, may I suggest we hear what the taxation officer has to say first? Yes, yeah, speak up, sir. <coughs> An official order of distraint in respect of non-payment of taxes has been executed this day and uh, reads as follows. Whereas... Sir Randolph Grimsby, Baronet of Midnight... Out of my sight! How dare you insult me in my heart, you vulture! I'll kill him! I'll kill him! I am a civil and public servant, sir. If your reaction to my reading of this order leaves me with no alternative but to serve it upon you, at the risk of my life even, the due process of the law... Out of my sight, you vulture! How dare you insult me! I will help you! Out of my sight! Get out! Get out! Make him take this thing back! After him! After him, the vultures! How dare they insult me in my own house? They won't get a penny out of me! Not another penny! I'll see them damned first, the vultures! But why me, Towser? I don't understand. A messenger from the mill landed it in a tradesman's, but I'd be glad if you gave it to him, see? Save me getting my back broke with that stick of his. Yes, but... My advice is, just give it him. Say now to what you think. Gilchurch wasn't the ringleader. It was another chap called Blackie Clegg. And someone else is behind him. Bloodwood. Bob Bloodwood. That's his name. Never tell of him. 
cripple, ain't he? Take my advice, Master Lucas. Leave well alone. Now, Mr. Copthorne, please give Sir Randolph a little more time. He's not himself today. He's very much himself, if you ask me. Pesky, contumacious, and bellicose. The worst tax default I've ever experienced. He's had his time, sir. In short, it is up. So is your sir. Get out of my house. Sir, you have been served with an order of distraint. If you do not pay all you owe, the court will send you to prison. You will also receive a summons for assaulting a revenue officer in pursuit of his lawful occasion. Now get out! Don't you tell me! Get out! I'm going to flee from you to last for the rest of my life! Get out! Go out, I'll kill you! Mr. Randolph, a physical attack on an official of Her Majesty's Commissioners of Taxes is a very serious offence indeed. It's lucky very much I didn't kill him. But 20 years' accumulation of unpaid taxes, Sir Randolph. It would seem the only solution is to sell the mill or this house. This house, sir, never. Well, I'm afraid the only alternative is to sell Midnight Mill. Oh, you mad, sir, taking leave of your senses. Carpet making is any source of income. If the mill goes, what I live on, what I feed the brats in this house on, I him, I him. Are you eavesdropping boy? Come here. I have a message for you, sir. Who from? Mr. Smallsum. Well, what's he doing giving messages to a boy? Uh, no, sir. He, he gave it to Towser to give it to me, to give it to you, sir, I mm, think, sir. And read it, boy. To Sir Randolph Crimson. Yes, yes, yes. I have the pleasure in informing you that I called in the dragoons. They restored order and, at my request, arrested the ringleader, one Albert Goatchurch. The output of carpets has now been restored to normal speed. I remain, sir, your deeply obedient servant, Bertram Smallsum. Yeah. manager. <laughs> The best bit of news we've had for months! Hey, if I may say so, sir, it still does not solve your tax problem. Then go and do something about it, sir! I will report the events to your brother, sir, but I... Tell him from me, order him from me to sort the whole matter out! Huh? He will convey your exact words, sir. Oh, good day, sir. Mm. Good day, gentlemen. Bloodsuckers they are, boy, all of them. Never get embroiled with the law. Not even when they're supposed to be acting on your side. Yes, sir. But, sir... Well, what now? The workers say they can't live on half pay. Don't oh, they tell you any cock and bull story to squeeze more money out of me? Well, you don't listen to them, you call out the militia. That's a lesson for you to learn, boy. But they've arrested the wrong man, sir. Yeah, just as well. Give him an example, eh? Huh? Keep the others down for a while. What are the soldiery for, anyway? Yes, sir, but... Now, don't argue, boy. You know nothing. You'll learn in time. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, Sir Randolph? Yes, 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 bless uh, you. Sorry to disturb you, sir. Yeah. The white cock you put in for the fire. Yes, yes. It lost, sir. Wait! It lost. The filthy, stupid bird, I'll wring its neck. Well, cock fighting's a fraud, you know that, old apple? I've been cheated. It'd be wiser, then, Sir Randolph, to refrain from investing in such a dubious venture altogether. You telling me what to do with my own money, sir? Oh, well, What is it? I'm behind in my work. I am very unhappy. There was shouting of voices last night. Very angry. But this is not a happy place where to live. Sir Randolph has troubles. Looks as if he might have to sell the house. This house? Why? Because he can't pay his taxes. What will happen to you and to me? I don't know. It is a punishment. What do you mean? Because Sir Randolph cheated the ass on my father. You don't know that. All we know for certain is that they had a race on horseback. I wish I were at home with my papa. Well, you can't be, can you? No. But I wish. Sir, what will happen if the house is sold? I mean, where will we live? How can we... Both of you! Now, these problems will be sorted out. You are not to worry about them. Amory, I'm preparing daily studies for you. You'll have plenty to think about. Sir, but if the house is sold, where will we have our lessons? What did I just say? I, I will go to my room, please. Ah! 
Father! I'd break my stick on your damn back if you don't look. Papa! <laughs> I'm missing my father! <laughs> Products of India. Excuse me, sir. Hmm? What did it mean when Towser told Sarandoff that the white cock had lost? Gambling. Sarandoff had wagered 50 pounds on some cankered old rooster. Well, Cockfighting, sir. Cockfighting, horse racing, prize fighting. That's why Sarandoff cannot pay his taxes, sir. You are a most inquisitive boy. Now concentrate on Africa. Doing India, sir. <clears throat> India, then. I've just thought, sir. Study, Lucas. Your studies come first. Just one more question? Yes, Lucas. Well, how does Sir Randolph manage to pay your wages? Oh. Sorry, sir. Well, in that case, why do you stay here? I have my reasons. Perhaps one day I shall be able to tell you. When shall I see you? Shall I see your face? I'm living in time at present, but you're living in space. And the nights wing their horses, no one can outpace. But midnight is not a moment, midnight is a place. Time is only a corner, age is only a fold. A year is merely a penny spent from a century's gold. So meet me at midnight with sixty seconds grace. For midnight is no moment, midnight is a place. Turn, turn the pages, read, read the words. Thoughts float like feathers, tales fly like birds. And the night's winged horses no one can outpace. But midnight is not a moment.